Welcome everybody. Um, I thought, I just got off a staff meeting. We've set up a kind of a weekly anti-racial discrimination, whatever, um, conversation in our office. And it feels like a lot of, a lot of people are, are talking about that now as they well should be. Um, and I wondered if we just, for our check-in first off is just talk about how our institutions are handling that topic and furthering that conversation, if you're comfortable doing that. Well, the library um, has just put out a statement um, and I saw today, I think I got, was it yes, today or yesterday, I got a, a statement um, from Concord Art. So I guess a lot of the institutions are doing that. Um, uh, Concord Arts was on their website and I don't know whether uh, we've gotten our statement um, on our website as yet, but the statement is from the Library Corporation, the, li the Library Friends, and the Friends of the Library. So it's um, um, a shared um, statement that has been made. Um, recognizing the importance of this time and what the library expects to do. So there are some specifics in it for each one of the um, entities, the corporation, the library committee, and for the friends. It's fairly lengthy, so I won't read it, <laughs> but it should be on the website soon. That's good. Concord Art, you did a nice job on yours too. You're muted. <laughs> You'd think after having a hundred of these a day, I don't know when to have you. Um, yeah, it took a really long time for us to do it because we wanted to get everybody's voice and include everybody in our in our you know board and staff and everybody. And um, that was super interesting, you know, to to do that because and I'm sure you found this at the library. Everybody. It, it was coming from all directions and um, and you know what we we all we have a lot of work to do and uh, we're reading some good books <laughs> um, and we're we have a um, and the reason we made the commitment statement was because that is what organizations are calling it because I think a lot of organizations are thinking I don't have to do that of course I'm on board with this but making that statement actually gives a little more muscle, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and then we're doing a show this summer that I think I've talked to Di and Rob about, um, and it's just a Black Lives Matter uh, show that might be virtual. Maybe a few people can come see it. We don't really know how that's going to work out. So, and we're hoping to, other people to share it with other organizations so they can um, put it on their websites in a virtual way and share in some programming with us um, to sort of make it as, as strong and as uh, full of solidarity as we possibly can. Um, so I'm excited that the world is behind all this and that maybe the UN will um, you know, slap the United States hand and say, stop it. <laughs> you guys are doing a bad job. I think that might be helpful. Anyway, I'll shut up. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Jeremy, I know that Carol will, uh, Carol Whalen is trying to get on. She said her link isn't working. Is okay, there anything I, I can do to help her? Um, you could just, I don't know if you could try resetting her the information. I, I'm not seeing anybody trying to pop in or anything like that. Uh, okay. So, if you, or if you give me, I don't have her email, so I wouldn't be able to send it to her. Okay, I'll look for her email. Tom, did you start talking? Uh, sure, well, um, partly what we've done is been working with the Robbins House, so um, I'll let Rob talk about what his institution's doing, but we um, have kind of doubled down on our mission-driven activities. So we were working, we had an exhibit about Thomas Dugan, so we have a weekly history at home. We sent that out uh, kind of at the height of 
some of the unrest on Friday. I did an interview with Maria Madison about Ellen Garrison that we're going to be using uh, partly this week for a, uh, we have these weekly history at home um, missives, so we're going to do one for Juneteenth um, on Friday. Uh, and also I'm having an event with our kind of biggest donors to thank them for helping us through this crisis. And um, again, a longer version of the interview with Maria, partly about our partnership with the Robbins House, but also partly about the content that we jointly share. So um, in essence, what, we're, what we've done to date. To echo what Tom was saying, you know, um, Tom's been, Tom and the museum have been excellent in terms of uh, incorporating a lot of the town's black history, uh, you know, not just in recent months, but for quite some time. And so we've been partnering with them um, with that work. We've also done a couple of other things. So we won't be obviously open for this season, but we are still trying to organize as much community as possible. So we, on June 1st, I believe we had a solidarity protest um, uh, right in front of the Robbins house through something like 300 people, which was um, amazing given the fact that we put it together in about 20 hours. Um, we obviously have had our statements that we sent out to our newsletter friends um, and, and things like that. And then we're also planning a Juneteenth celebration, not celebration, sorry, reflection on Friday. Um, we won't actually do anything. Usually we do a Juneteenth celebration in front of the house, but this year we want to take more of a solemn approach um, given recent violence um, on black bodies. And we decided to, um, at noon, we will send out a thing on our social media and ask people to have a second of reflection for eight minutes and 46 seconds. Um, and ask people to pause to remember to reflect we'll send out some resources some educational things around juneteenth um and then as we piggyback off of that we're getting ready for our reading frederick Douglass event which we'll do on the fourth of july um so we you know in a way this moment has catalyzed some of what we do but in general this is a time during the year where we're doing quite a bit of this work already and so um we're, we're, we're already in the throes of it. And, and um, but we're grateful that this moment has brought, I guess, new energy to a lot of people in Concord who now are sharing the work that we do and um, kind of, I think, appreciating a little bit more what we've been doing for quite some time. Rob, I understand that um, uh, Chief O'Connor spoke. He did, at yeah. The, um, how, and uh, people have said it to me, it was very moving. Yeah, so I, I called Chief O'Connor that morning. Um, it was actually, it was my wife's idea, so I have to give her the credit on this one. Um, she she broached the idea of inviting the Concord Police Force um, as a sign of solidarity. And I called him up and he said, I'll be there. And I think uh, three members of the force were there and I don't think he was anticipating saying anything. We certainly didn't ask him to, um, but uh, he got up and, and said some really powerful things that I think resonated with a lot of people, um, specifically those of us of color who um, don't, you know, I, I didn't know Chief O'Connor before that, right? And I don't know many members of the police force, but this was a, it was a great moment, I think, um, I for people to hear his voice to, to stand against all this violence that's happening and to share a little bit what the um, what the, the public safety officers are doing in town um, to keep folks safe. So it was it was powerful. It really was. Good. Great. Was that recorded, Rob? Was that all it, of that recorded? It is. Um, and we sure. we have been sharing parts of it on our social media. Um, and so I, I don't know where the full recording is. I'd have to I'd have to go back and check. But yeah, we recorded the event. That's great. Yeah. Um, uh, may I ask a question, um, Rob? In order to get maybe some more publicity for your upcoming events, how, would you maybe uh, consider uh, sending something to the town uh, news and notices? I'm trying to remember the name of the person who's in charge of that. But, Aaron, Aaron Stevens. Yeah, Aaron Stevens. And um, because um, I knew about some of these events, but I didn't know about your um, Juneteenth and I didn't know about July 4th. So right. 
be great to get more publicity. Absolutely, no, I appreciate that. Yeah, the uh, <laughs> the protest, very few people heard about that because it just came together. Um, but with Juneteenth and um, reading Frederick Douglass, I'll make sure to get it to, um, who you guys said it was, Aaron Stevens? Great, um, so that we can spread that a little bit wider. Thanks for that, I appreciate it. Rob, would you object if um, we just, if we shared that in our e-blast this week? Not at all, please do. Okay. Um, and I can say- I mean, we would share the Juneteenth yeah. for this no. week and then our ju the July one we would share later. Okay. More, the more the merrier, no, we'd love that. All right. Rob, I think that we're hosting your July 4th. You are. The, the readings, aren't we? So we'll, so we'll, um, we'll, we'll certainly send that out. Thank you for board. mentioning that. I, I was on a call about it last night and I'm sorry I didn't give you guys kudos for um, no, that, no, for collaborating with us on that one. No, thank you. <laughs> that, I'll, make sure, I'll make sure to put that in the meeting notes. Don't you worry. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> My point was we can help you advertise it. Thank you. And is that through a grant through Mass Humanities? So usually, reading? it usually is. I have to go back to our programming chair to make sure that she um, actually applied for that grant. We usually, we usually do. Um, I'm not sure how that worked this year and how they were doing it virtually. Um, so, so yeah. Okay. So well, Rob, I want to go after. I'm sorry. I just wanted to ask if you could, um, I, I imagine that everybody is approaching you right now. We're pretty busy. It's kind of, it's great. No yeah. way. <laughs> Which is great. But do you think that you might be able to share other resources with us so that we don't, um, you know, so that we can draw more. About Juneteenth uh, specifically? About, yeah, just about black history or uh, any resources that you think are great in the area for, um, for organizations to partner with. And me, I don't know yeah. if there are any others in Concord. I, I mean, I don't even know. Yeah. Let me, yeah, let me look, let me look into that. Cause I, there are, there are things in at least the greater Concord area, I think that, that are super powerful. And obviously in Boston, there's, there's a significant number. Um, mm -hmm. If you wouldn't mind, can you email this to me later on today? I will. Um, I know you're so busy. No, sure. that's fine. That's fine. I, I want to make sure I give it some, some, some good thought. Okay. Out. Yeah. One of the things our staff is doing is compiling lists of resources okay. and it's vast and I think that we can we can probably share that as well. Great. Um, yeah, I mean we it's it's there's a lot of information out there. So <laughs> it's it's great. Yeah. 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 Carol, welcome. We're um, just going around and talking about how our institutions are responding to the anti racist demonstrations and that sort of thing. You might be muted. She's muted, yeah. Thank you, sorry I was late. Is there anything you wanted to share about 51 Malden? Oh, we have an interesting wrinkle. Uh, we are, of course, a phase three building, but uh, there's a phase two activity which would like to occur in it. So talking to the town about uh, if you can segregate parts of a building. <laughs> the specific is a, a dance program, which if it's considered a camp, uh, would have to be licensed by the Board of Health, uh, and, which w wouldn't be able to be done in time. Uh, but it's not really a recreational camp. It's a dance instruction with a little bit of arts and crafts and stuff. So uh, anyway, but I, I don't know how we'll, how far we'll get with that argument with the town. Sure like to have it. Our camps are all virtual this summer. Well, uh, there's a category in phase two of arts instruction, which is permitted. So that's what I think this activity is. Terry, Marcia, did you wanna to respond to our topic? Uh, well, the, uh, 
Luck Board um, and the county manager each uh, put out some uh, uh, statements um, in support of um, the Black protesters and the Black Lives Matter and the whole thing. Um, and again, we're happy to publicize any of your events. Um, and question for Carol, uh, who are you working with at the town on this? Uh, Susan Rask at the Board of Health. Okay. And this is a very uh, modest little program, uh, just a morning camp, a couple out, two and a half hours. There's no meal. There's, uh, you know, well, anyway, <laughs> we're trying to work it out. Uh, and then, of course, we would have to say that they would not have the use of the theater because then you get into the phase three venue. Uh, the the and that's fine. That's easily done. And it, the rules even for arts instruction would be uh, small groups of kids, like five or fewer. Marcia, anything? Uh, not on this topic. Okay, okay. Um, well, do you want to jump into our agenda? Anybody else have anything on? That? No, not, I have a hard stop at 2.45, just, but you, you okay. can go on. Okay. Um, so uh, the agenda I put together may not match exactly with the meeting notes. I, my memory was a little bit different. <laughs> So I, I remember that we talked about three initiatives to follow up on. One was the graphics package and potential signage, and we're talking about how to spend um, the grant money that we have from MCC and the money from the town, the match money from the town. Um, and last week or the last meeting, we talked about <clears throat> maybe five or six different options. Um, I just remembered three different ones than Marsha <laughs> but Marsha was writing it down, so that's good. Um, it and Rob, are you, I got everything. Rob, are you taking minutes today? Are you still our clerk? I am still the clerk and I'm currently taking minutes. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, so I think that the, what I had, had written down was the graphic package um, and signage, et cetera. Um, the drive-in and public art, right? So I can report on the graphics package. I think I sent it to everybody this morning. I've had conversations with David um, and he's he's been a big help. He just jumps on it like five minutes after you ask him. He's just incredibly fast and, and facile. Um, and uh, he can work with Billy Crosby if we wanna come up with an estimate on that. So what I took to him was the idea that um, we wanted to simplify what he had done before does everybody have it? I don't know if I can put it up on the screen. Yeah, it's in your email. I can look yeah. at that. Um, and in an effort to simplify it, we just took the, we tried to combine the text and the image um, and surround the image with the text as opposed to having two pieces. Um, and he did variations of colors and shapes. And if people are comfortable with that direction, I can continue to work with them on that. Um, my, my memory also failed me in terms of who had offered to help on this little subcommittee. Um, so if anyone's I'm happy interested to in that. Okay. In, in the ones you sent, I, I felt there was a clear winner. Okay. And that was the oval one, which was in the first um, uh, set of pictures that you sent. Um, and it's the outside circle is in the sort of maroon red color. The I top think left it's one. Easiest to read. I think the um, the sort of the deep red color is a, the warmest of the of the tones. And I like the oval shape. Uh, it's distinctive. So okay. to me, that's the clear winner. What David and I talked about was that. Um, over time or different situations, the color might change. If it's a strong enough image, it doesn't have to be the same color mm -hmm. for every use. 
Anybody else want to comment on those? I agree. It's the easiest to read the text because of the partly the font size or the font itself and the contrast between the deep red and the white. I know that there are probably some that wanted to make it even simpler. And all I can say is that's as far as I got. So maybe what I'll take, I'll do is, is take that back to David and start working with um, Billy, Billy Crosby and get a quote for, um, for how many signs, two signs. At least, maybe At least four. Four. Okay. Um, Marcia, can you remind us what's going on with West Concord Junction District? Um, they've got two projects underway. Um, right now, we're working on an art mural. Um, there's about 100 tiles yet to be done. They've completed 200 of the 300 total. And that's celebrating um, West Concord and the agricultural history of Concord itself. Um, and then we're working on a signage project where we take the MCC uh, sort of template for the cultural districts and modifying it for West Concord Village. So there'll be some symbols there, such as the Harvey Wheeler uh, clock tower, the train station, um, and a couple of other buildings like the smokestack and, and the Bradford Mill area that are reflected in that, but it's using the same color scheme that's been proposed by MCC. And um, we hope to have four uh, cultural district signs plus some parking signage that will be developed out of that. And it's, it's just those two projects that they're working on. Okay. Um, so if they pursue that direction with the signage and we pursue this direction, there won't be any connection between the two districts. That's correct. Okay. Anybody see that as a problem? I see Rob shaking his head no, and I see Di thinking about speaking <laughs> well i i think it would i think it would be hard to to jump ship at this point with what we've been working on uh we've been going in the direction of simplifying if we were to take um symbols of our village there's so many i don't know it, it uh, would be hard i don't think it's critical to to try to marry the two um I think, <laughs> I think that, that we will be getting the stock signage for the Mass Cultural Council, from the Mass Cultural Council for Concord Center, which is sort of a rural view of Concord Center. And, um, and if we want in the future, we can always adapt that to be something that reflects both the Mass Cultural Council and the Concord Center Cultural District. I think what you are working on and developing will be a really good logo for any letterhead, any uh, identification for store owners or businesses or arts groups to incorporate into their advertising. So I'm, I think the direction that you've selected to go will work just as well. You, you mentioned something about the um, recommended colors and MCC's colors, is there a, a co color palette that they have recommended? <laughs> I, I'm not aware of it. They have developed a, um, a very, some very bright signage. <laughs> so I can, okay. um, I can share that with you. Um, at a few, I'll send it by email. Okay, so I think that we can wrap that little project up and come up with a, with a estimate or a, some sort of contract if we want to use that to encumber funds by the end of the year. Right? Um, the other, well, there were two other topics. One was the drive-in theater, and I was hoping that Kim or Beth would be here to talk about that, but um, I don't have any 
of the information on that. But the third topic was the Rick Steves um, app. Um, I can just share that I, we went to the drive-in theater in Menden uh, last weekend. Or last, it was during the week, actually. Um, we went on a rainy day, and we thought nobody was going to be there. The place was crowded. It was jammed. I mean, they had, the cars were social distanced uh, and so forth. They're spaced out. But both, t uh, both screens were full. Um, and people were using, going to the restrooms there. Um, and they were, had a limited number of snacks available. But it was very, very popular. So, what was the technology of getting the sound in the car? Was it Bluetooth or were there speakers? If you had Bluetooth, you could um, access it with your radio. If you didn't, um, they had uh, for five dollars, um, you pay for a box that, they, that you put in your car. You had to give them your license, <laughs> and so and you, you got your license back when you put the when you returned the box. Hi, how many people would you estimate? Oh boy. Oh, I don't know. I would say there were probably about 40 in, in each. They, it was a, if you were looking at a typical parking lot, um, it was every other car. There's space between them. And uh, it was full, absolutely full. And that was built as a drive-in theater, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. So were the cars up at a little bit of an angle and everything? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know that Beth had done research and the rec department was helping her mm -hmm. with that. And that was right after we met, but I haven't heard anything. She didn't share any with yeah. anything with me in advance. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Has any progress been made on the Rick Steves app or any direction set how to move ahead with that? Are you asking me? <laughs> <laughs> Only because it was your idea. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I have not made any progress on the Rick Steves app. Uh, I think, um, like so many, I got a little um, overwhelmed by other news events and didn't uh, get to it. Yeah. We're we have a small staff, so I. <laughs> so no, but, but even after thinking about that idea and. Uh, Someone, I don't know, Rob, if you heard the whole idea, I mean, essentially get Rick Steve, Rick Steves does this for hire. He'll come to your town and do a tour. So it's, uh, I think it's audio, right? But, you know, we have so many, so much local talent that, you know, again, to have kind of an African-American history tour with Rob or Maria leading it or mm -hmm. Jan doing the, you know, Alcott family tour or David Wood here. I, I almost think that, I'd be prouder of something like that. Um, you know, so it's not Rick Steves' voice, but it's really, it's our, you know, people who know this history better than any. Of course, you know, it'd be a little, you know, you have to be, it'd be a little political, you have to be diplomatic about who gets how much time and that kind of thing. But I, anyway, I think if we're gonna invest some money in it, why, why not use our own people? One reason to use Rick Steve is just to get it out there. Right? right, and maybe there's some sort of combination. Maybe Rick could introduce it and promote it, but we use our own talent. Yeah. I think Rick Steves would interview each. Oh yeah, well that would be good then. Yeah. And then, um, and the idea is yes, as Jerry said, that he, his marketing ability would be far beyond ours. <laughs> far, far, yeah. far. Yeah. So. Um, well, I don't know when the world's going to slow down that we can focus on it. But you know, <laughs> maybe we right now, think of... Shouldn't we do something that's more, that has more to do with what's going on in the world right now? But God knows what's going to happen next. Month, so I, I don't know. I, just, I don't know. So another item that was on our list was the idea of public art. And um, I think that when we put it out there, we were thinking pretty broad in terms of coming up with some sort of public art master plan or putting something together. But um, I had the thought <clears throat> last week, because we have a project started with the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail. Um, mm -hmm. It's called Go Outdoors and we have artists painting doors and they're actually really beautiful. Um, 
and I think that the rail trail has slowed it down a little bit just so we can keep socially distanced. Uh -huh. um, so we're going to phase it in. So the community isn't going to see, you know, I don't remember how many doors there were on July 1st, but they might see two at a time, two per month or something like that. Uh -huh. But I wondered, we now have the program somewhat established and we have the artists lined up and the technology in place. Uh -huh. I wonder if we could just expand that to Concord Center. And we could even put a kind of a theme to it. If we can you, to. Jerry, can you explain uh, yeah. more precisely? So artists, you, artists are given doors. Doors? What do you, you mean, mean by doors? doors? Like, like three foot by seven foot doors. You mean actual um, front doors of front houses? Doors. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the, the name of the exhibit is Go Outdoors. Mm -hmm. And that's the pun. And then uh, they're they're installed along the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail. Mm -hmm. And we got a grant from the friends, I think, of the Rail Trail uh, for this installation. Um, so the idea would just be to take that and expand it into Concord Center. Mm -hmm. um, I think that we've already talked to people at Trails End and some other, some other places. So there's some interest. Uh -huh. um, and I'm just thinking if, um, you know, it's a project that has some momentum already. We don't have to start from scratch, right? We don't, we can't take the doors that we've, that we've, uh, that have been created for the rail trail because they paid for those. Um, but we can work with artists to get new ones. And, I, and I'm not sure that they're going to be able to use all that have been developed so far, Jerry. Um, I met with Nancy Lippi last week and we rode a portion of the trail and I've, we've identified some additional locations, but some of the ones that she had selected were too close to existing residences or, and she had proposed Junction Park and that's already so crowded. So, um, so I think we ended up with maybe nine locations and she said she had something like 13 or 14 doors. So it may work out really well. Um, we're planning to install a couple at a time so people, they'll start popping up um, beginning in July and be out until I think November is when she's planning to bring them back indoors. So it's a temporary art ex uh, exhibition and I think that would fit really beautifully with some of the things that are being discussed for Concord Center. What is the time frame? It's starting in July and is there a time frame for it to end? they would be brought back in in November. So that would be the time frame, July through November. Mm -hmm. It sounds fun. Are there more artists who are willing to do the doors? Well, I'm just thinking it would be nice to reach out to artists of color to do them. Mm -hmm. um, We would need to identify locations and in the center of Concord, which is pretty, pretty easy to do. So I'm going to speak out of both sides of my mouth. One, I think it's a good idea. I'm an intriguing idea. I'd be supportive. But it, for some reason, it's um, helping me to identify that, like, what is our mission? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. well, like somehow the the um, uh, the film series seemed to me to unite us in a way that this one doesn't. Though this seems a worthy goal. So anyway, at some point, it might be helpful just to be sure. Like, so is our mission just uh, you know embracing and promoting cultural culture writ large, or um, anyway. Uh, Something about this one doesn't resonate as much with me, but I'm not a resident of the town, so maybe, maybe that's, you know, and I, but maybe it's also our, our, is our, would this bring people in? Is that part of our, anyway, it just ra raises some questions to me. But it, it's not against this initiative, it just somehow the initiative itself made me start thinking, um, would I embrace this over other things that we've talked about? Well, it's definitely, the theme is not as compelling as the theme we were working with before of revolutions <laughs> and as fitting as what we were, you know, thinking of before. So I, I, I would agree. 
I, I think we could, um, if we want to do, uh, are able to do with the funds that we have, a couple of things, perhaps we should do the graphics, which we're on the track for, and um, uh, maybe think about um, all of our institutions, I believe, are working on programming now, having to do with um, the racial uh, conversation that we're having in the United States, so and, and around the world. <laughs> so I think we should go back to our ideas that we were thinking about before, and find, kind of fine tune them and work with those work with some of our former ideas. It is certainly interesting that um, people are saying that we are having a revolution in the United States right now. So <laughs> um, it certainly fits with our original idea. Yeah. Um, we are ahead of our time. <laughs> we can't even catch up to ourselves. It's <laughs> too, too much. Um, Speaking of which, none of the films that we had, were, were any of the films we were talking about, did they touch upon that issue? I mean, the, the one that, this is too far afield, the one we were thinking of doing was about a revolutionary leader in Puerto Rico who wanted to essentially lead a violent uprising to allow Puerto Rico to have its independence and he was in jail and then, you know, he had kind of a conversion in jail, now he works with prisoners, but anyway, it, it resonated and mm -hmm. conquered history in some ways in the contemporary context, but I don't think it's right for this moment. But were any of our other films, did they have an issue about racial justice in the United States? Certainly um, Jenny Phillips films, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, about, uh, she was, you right. know, about mass incarceration, but. Um, and Agnes, the Agnes Gunn film as well. The which one? Sorry. The Agnes Gunn, Aggie, Agnes oh. Gunn. Mm -hmm. And they've been in touch with me still. They're interested in seeing if they can do something. It would be virtual. Uh, I'm starting to hate virtual. I have to say. <laughs> All right, I, I got to get over myself on that. I know. Um, Hang in there a little longer. <laughs> I know. Um, let's see. I like the idea that Rob had about having a nice blow up um, you know, screen over in the parking lot of the Robbins house and uh, showing some movies over there, right in the seat of the revolution. <laughs> the good parking lot for that, don't you think, Rob? Very good parking lot for it. If we can get the permission to do it, it would be an excellent, um, excellent thing. We haven't talked, to, we, we haven't gotten that far to talk about um, using it this summer, but we, we have, no programming right now planned for mid to late July and August. So that that's an opportunity we could put in there. And we were planning on the um, the William Monroe Trotter movie, um, which I think would fit in pretty well this summer. Um, mm. And we, yeah, we we ha we have a good scholar. We have a couple of good scholars um, that we could line up for that. So if if we wanted to cycle back to that, Robin's House would certainly be on board to to rekindle that. You know, I was th thinking about, remember the platform uh, thing that was done by the trustees over at the park? And um, it, it kind of fell flat because- It was really time, popular. It was, the time wasn't quite right for it, I don't think. If it was this summer, it'd be awesome, but it, was, but it wasn't. Because um, uh, that artist who created it is a really incredible guy. Um, anyway, uh, it would be, what about getting some amazing speakers? You know, like um, some people who've written some amazing books about um, like the anti-racist author who- uh, This foundation is coming to be you. Yeah, his, the mayor has hired him to, you know, uh, create a, a, a difference in Boston. I mean, he's really, I've heard him speak um, and he, he's wonderful. But. I think there's gonna be quite a waiting list to get him to speak. 
Brian Stevens? Yeah. Uh, Ibram X. Kendi. Yeah, that's his name. I can't, yeah. I always forget his name. Mm -hmm. No, he, we, I've, I've already started looking into that for Concord Academy. It's going to yeah. take a couple years. He's, he's, gonna, he's got his hands full. Popular, yeah. You can't get his book no. anywhere. Um, so then there's the woman who wrote um, White Fragility. Yes. Um, and maybe she, that book's been out for a while, so she might be more. I'm sorry, everyone. I've got another meeting that I promised oh, to hop on it. No, no, it's okay. Mm. I, I support whatever. I, I'm not a voting member. No, because so the speaker not. series, you're, you're going to help out with that, right, Tom? I certainly can help. I would help. <laughs> but it could Pardon? be outdoors. That's what, I'm just wondering, what could you do outdoors? You I've, know, you know, I've heard, um, I think this would be much smaller, but uh, we've done films here before with people putting out blankets and things like that. But again, with social distancing, I think you could probably only get 75 people or so. Um, that's a lot. I think that's plenty. Um, so, uh, you know, I, yeah. Rob, we're on some other calls with BJ, and I know he is a little worried about that parking lot. Um, yeah. You know, so oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's. That's what's kind of endearing about BJ is he worries about things. So yeah. um, it might, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, well, we couldn't do anything without getting his full support about it. So, yeah. but I anyway. mean, we couldn't get the whole muster field or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, uh, but Jerry, if you want to send me an email at the end about what you all decided, how I can help, I'm more than happy okay. to help. Great, great. Thanks, Tom. Have a good afternoon. Um, Marcia. <laughs> Circling around to the um, the idea of the uh, using uh, the field at the Robbins house, I mean the parking lot at the Robbins house, if we did it at night, that would work out well with the national park because they don't use it at night. So we could do like a, the drive-in or a, a screen screen of film. Um, when we do, when you go to drive-in movie, you get a ticket ahead of time. We went to um, uh, the court of a museum the other day, you pay by the car, you get your reg reservation ahead of time. So I think that it could be simplified in terms of people being in their car versus sitting out on a field mm -hmm. um, and to do it outdoors. And the venue could change if we, if it got, uh, it could be one movie could be at that parking lot, one movie could be at the umbrella site, one movie could be, um, um, you know at the museum parking lot so it could move around mm -hmm. and if it were the parking all of those parking lots are relatively small with the social distancing of the cars so that could perhaps afford a, some kind of uh, follow-up um, mm -hmm. and, and discussion afterward I don't know but mm -hmm. it's just a thought. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Marsha, I just wanted to circle back to you because this conversation started with the idea that we needed to spend some money before the, or encumber some money before the end of the year. Um, <laughs> if we're going back to our original ideas, we're not spending the money. So, <sighs> so the, I know that there's the, the $5,000 from MCC and maybe that's we can encumber thing. that. That's the only okay. thing that you need to spend. So, you know, if, if, um, if the person who's been doing your design for the logo uh, sent us a, a, a check or an invoice rather, or a bill for $5,000, $4,999, um, I can put together a purchase order and, and have him on board. And then you can continue working for however long you need to. And we might be able to use, you know, or maybe half of that, I don't know what he's gonna charge um, or that we could, then line up Billy Crosby to create a sign out, out from out of, out, of, out of that. So, so the additional $5,000 that was in your budget, do we risk losing that with town budgets and deficits or whatever? Uh, <laughs> it was encumbered in prior years. And with the new town manager, I don't know if he has decided to eliminate all past encumbrances or not. Um, I may have one more year that I can use to spend that. So um, I will argue that you, because of COVID-19, we weren't able to do what we needed to do and, and be able to hold on to that, but it will be ultimately his decision. Okay. Um, 
And also, I think Mass Cultural Council, am I unmuted? Yeah. Um, they're giving people more leniency with time um, to spend money um, because of COVID. So I, I don't know if you've looked into that, Marcia. But... I, I did have a conversation with Luis. He was hopeful that we could have it somehow dedicated or directed okay. by the end of June. But um, I will argue that we're still discussing it and um, hopefully they won't ask that it be returned. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, there might be a know, few problems at the state as well, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. If it is returned, um, someone else will make good use of it, I guess. I mean, if, if we can't use it, we can't use it. We shouldn't, I don't think we should, you know, create something that isn't great if we can't, you know, if we can't do it. I, I mean, what we wanted to do couldn't happen, so. Oh, right. Yeah. So it sounds like the group is interested in furthering the discussions of where we were six months ago, right? And figuring out a way to to build some sort of festival or some sort of film program mm -hmm. around the topics we've been talking about before. I don't think it has to be a film program. I think, I think um, film speaker. sentiment is the theme. We want to have a, a good theme that is relevant at this point in time. <laughs> Things are happening so fast, who knows? Uh, but at this point in time, a theme that works for all of the institutions and that could be um, some kind of um, a movie or a film, or it could also be a conversation, a discussion, or a speaker. Could yeah, and the speakers who can't come live, um, they could come virtually pretty uh -huh. easily, more easily, certainly, on a given Tuesday night or whatever. If they're a big enough draw, you know, I've been to some lectures where there were 200 people online, and the, it was great because the person was in another country. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> so that's a, that's that's one of the silver linings, I guess, of the um, of doing things virtually. Yeah. Right. Could I bring up something that Tom had brought earlier in terms of I'm I'm interested and curious about our mission and how it relates to this film festival and its new potential iteration being virtual or what have you, speaker mm -hmm. series even. Um, the way I understood it was that part of our mission was to also so to bring cultural awareness to Concord and programming to Concord that also benefits the town and the center economically as well. Mm -hmm. right? So we're talking yeah. about hospitality industry, restaurants, all of that stuff. Um, and in a way, virtual a virtual speaker series or a virtual film series precludes that um, mm -hmm. potentially. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm well, unless unless they're sponsored, right? Unless the, that is that's very true, um, <laughs> but I I I would have a tough time imagining any organization in downtown Concord sponsoring this event virtually, as they would get maybe they get some marketing out of it, but they're not. It's not like people are going to race from there to the Colonial Inn, right? For dinner afterward or something like that. I don't know. I'm, I'm having a tough time reconciling these two aspects of well, our things. I think they're at no, least it's a good point. at odds, it's you know? <laughs> And so, and, and I don't know what that means for our work going forward. Does it mean that we have to postpone this work until we're back in person? That could be next spring, right? I, I don't know. Because like, we're, we're trying to get people to Concord but people aren't coming to Concord because of all the restrictions and the health risks. Um, so then how can we do this work in a viable way, I guess? That's a big meta- Well, they point. are coming. They're coming to um, recreate here all the time. They're on the river in all droves. day That's true. in droves. Bikers, cyclists. If you wanted to do river fires like they do in Providence, Rhode Island, that would right. be huge. <laughs> That's true. That's, but that's not part of our yeah. Most of a cycling tournament, it would be the yes, best. Yes, like a exactly. Oh, I, mm -hmm. Yeah, if we if it was a recreation, um, grant. Yeah. 
Oh. Or ice cream. I drove by Kimball's ice cream. over the weekend. Exactly. I thought it was a protest. There were so many people there. <laughs> and you have to order it online like three days before. Yeah. And then people have to, you know, later. It's kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. But yeah, people are, there's a desire for ice cream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I'm almost wondering, though, do we want to reach out to some of the um, restaurants or other organizations in town to get a sense of what they would be interested um, like that gauge their interest in doing this, right? If before we decide to go full bore into a speaker series or a um, film series for late summer, early fall, um, if we're not gonna get sponsors for it, if they're not gonna feel like they're collaborating with us, mm -hmm. does that just go against the work that we're supposed to be doing, you know? Yeah, and that, right just sparked, that just sparked a thought that the town, is it, is, is it maybe Conquered together or together conquered. They sent out a survey asking what you'd be comfortable with with retail. And there was a question about dining in Concord uh -huh. and how do people feel about closing off Walden Street one night a week or something? Oh. And if we could integrate something cultural around the food experience and dining experience, then maybe that would just enrich. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, there. Uh, town staff is currently looking at a grant pro grant program that just came online um, this week that will allow us to either close off streets or parking areas or or something sidewalks in public domain to think about how we can uh, provide for outdoor dining and so um, I'm going on a call shortly to consider what that might look like in Concord Center and in West Concord. Um, the idea of providing some form of entertainment or music or, or something along those lines or um, might work really beautifully with with what we're trying to offer. Um, the the Ec Economic Vitality Committee is really, really concerned about reopening um, businesses, reopening restaurants. The rest, there are about 40 restaurants were invited to a meeting a, a week and a half ago. Um, and they hadn't really thought through how they were going to offer or how they were going to even address the first phase of the reopening um, with the outdoor seating idea and they're expecting the town to help them. So it's, um, it's a very challenging time for our businesses. I doubt you'll find any sponsors out there right now. They are just struggling. Yeah. Um, so yeah. if, if there were a way of identifying something that could benefit our businesses and our restaurants, that would be really cool. Marsha, what about that jazz festival that is so popular every year? It's canceled for this year. That was in June. So, yeah. And so to bring some jazz musicians wouldn't help, you know, that wouldn't... The, it might be if we, if, if we could, the, it's the social distancing component of everything. So if, if there were, but if, depending on what we end up with, if there is a, a way of um, providing for safe, um, safe dining experience for people. That's mm -hmm. what we'd like to be able to do. <laughs> yeah, I saw in Boston that it was a real problem. They mm -hmm. opened up and uh, nobody social distanced at distanced at their outdoor restaurants, and that um, they think it's a problem. So, mm -hmm. okay. So we're at the end of our hour. Okay. It's been a great discussion. Um, it sounds like we have ideas to kind of keep talking about. Um, I mean, when this thing first started, I just thought, oh, okay, we're on hiatus until we get some better vision of where, where things are going. But maybe we are starting to talk about reemerging and how we can be part of that. So should we get back to our monthly meetings? That's fine by me. If that works, okay. yeah, that's fine. Okay. Rob, you just turned much more handsome on the screen. What happened? <laughs> Maybe he's, he's exited for a minute. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> My daughter woke up from a nap. Uh, I had to go get a screaming two-year-old. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, so let's do that. I'll, I'll focus on the, the branding part and... and um, try to get that wrapped up and let's just keep this conversation going about how we engage with the business community and um, help how we can bringing 
culture to other events in town. Is that a way to frame it? Yeah. Sounds good. Maybe yeah, Rob, I'm glad you brought up the um, the businesses part. I forgot about that. That it was it, the grant is meant to um, stimulate that. So maybe we could take a short term and a long term approach. And the short term might be that we could do something, um, a virtual event of some sort that is working with a theme and mm -hmm. um, do have the uh, businesses, uh, restaurants provide the food, which the person who signs up would be paying for and that would be delivered to the house. Um, the library did a film on Joe Wheeler. It was um, done about a week ago and uh, almost 200 people registered for it and uh, it was the cheese shop that provided the meal. So that's something that's happening, that kind of thing. And of course, the umbrella did that with Saltbox Kitchen too. Um, so that could be a short-term thing that would at least engage one or more restaurants. Um, and then the long-term view would be to do the app with the theme. And the app would be, it could go out now and people all around the world could you know, see this app and, you can't wait to come. <laughs> so it'd be like having extra publicity for the long, when everything opens up again. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyway, just a thought. Maybe, um, you know, we know Jared Bowen a little better than we know um, <laughs> Rick Steves. Uh -huh. I mean, he's more local. So he could perhaps do a Concord travel app. Just, okay. who knows. <laughs> But he's, you know, our local. Rick's audience is still bigger. It's much bigger, yeah. I still say to people, you know, I asked them if they watch Jerry Bowen and everyone's like, oh, I've seen that online, but nobody actually tunes in to his show, mm. as far as I know. But yeah, that's true. Rick is bigger. So who do you know, Jerry, at WGBH or PBS? Or do you know anybody there? Robin Young just did a fantastic interview with. Oh, yeah. Um, Mm. Well, ask her if she can put you in touch with Rick. <laughs> right? I mean, I just well, don't yeah. believe yet. Yeah, well, I could track that down. Yeah. I was just going to say that we should all, through our institutions, use every opportunity we can to encourage people to shop in Concord, whether it's for yeah. meals. Um, what we did for the gala was we just partnered with, I think, four or five restaurants and encouraged sponsors and patrons who were coming to the gala to order their meals through those restaurants. We didn't pay for them. They paid for them, but at least it gave the, the restaurants business. Yeah. Sounds good. I do have to go. Yeah. But yes. I'll, well, good luck with your allergies. Yeah, I hope they're allergies. Somebody said to me today, are you sure you don't have anything <laughs> worse? I'm like, no, no, no. But okay. Just try I'm to taste something. <laughs> Yeah, I don't have it. Right, well, it's great to see you all. Yep. You too. Um, we'll reconvene in a month. Sounds Thanks. good. Okay, good. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Carrie.